and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Cryptid Crush. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. And we all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alright. Ha 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 ha! Haunted house, huh? What, you like a theater kid or something? Uh, band kid. I, I play the trumpet. Oh my gosh, me too! Uh, probably. What did you play? Oh, you know Madhouse is a bass guitar guy. Cause the sky's the limit when you're making shit up. You really don't remember anything? Nothing outside the station. But that's okay. I feel like we're close to a breakthrough here. I had fun today, so thanks. Night, band geek. Good night, rock star. You finally drift off to sleep. You sit alone on the far end of your, go of your old overgrown yard, staring out into the woods past the overgrowth. You hug your knees to your chest and wipe tears from your eyes, sniffling. Hey! A pair of bright red eyes peer out from the bushes ahead. You don't respond. Well, what's up? Nothing. Ducking and weaving through the brush is Atlas, looking rather scrappy in his overalls and torn open boots. Do you like my new shoes? They don't fit. Exactly! It's so I can still grab stuff. Atlas picks up a stick between his talons and swishes it around. Want to see me draw? Uh, okay. The moth drags the stick through the dirt and scrawls something out, all while standing on one foot. Ta-da! You look down at the ground and see two shakily drawn stick figures holding hands. One figure has big eyes and feelers. You and me? Atlas looks rather proud of himself. You're just trying to make me feel better. Is it working? What's the matter? Nobody believes me! Uh, believes what? That you're real! Everyone says, oh, you're playing pretend, that's just your imaginary friend. Uh, the photo! Didn't you take my picture? It's too blurry. Hopping across the ground, Atlas flops onto the fallen log next to you. Well, sounds like you need more proof. He digs around and plucks a feather from his neck fluff. Well, this should do the trick. A feather? Everybody's gonna think you're a crow! You hear leaves rustling, heavy footsteps marching through the dense forest behind you. Huh? Who's there? You look back and see Atlas is gone. Your backyard, the forest, everything is gone. Wake up! Towering over you is a gruff, long-haired stranger dressed in a white t-shirt and slacks. A piece of copy paper with a squiggly face scribbled in marker is taped to his face acting as some lousy mask. Oz? What are you doing in my dream? The intruder claps a hand to his chin and peels the paper off his face. Bad disguise. The Howler hoists you up his burly arms. His hands are rough and his forearms are etched with tattoos. Watch your head. Oz tosses you like a trash bag and you fall out of bed. Laying on the floor, you stare up at the ceiling, your heart racing in your chest. You hear a knock at the door. And another knock at the door. Are you going to get that? Absolutely fuming, you leap to your feet, march to the kitchen and glare through the peephole. Whoever it is, they're blocking the peephole. You open the door. Good morning. You're relieved it's a friendly face, but irked at being woken up at such an early hour. Couldn't you just have texted me? I feel like any more text might be rude, since your phone is now home to a ghost. Mike's not a digipad. Can I come in? I brought breakfast. Jamie reaches into their Jamie reaches into their day into their day bag and pulls out a fragment loaf of pumpkin bread, alongside a plate of muffins. You look at the muffins. All is forgiven. You step aside, letting the devil into your apartment. Jamie's horns clunk against the doorframe as they walk inside. I want to write August a sympathy card. Jamie strolls through the kitchen and places their bag on the table. Reaching inside, they pull out a fistful of markers and a blank card. That's not a bad idea. But where do I start? Look at now. Actually, yeah, that's a good for the drawing. A picture's worth a fa thousand words. Just draw whatever's in your heart. My heart? Squatting down, Jamie pops the lid off one of the markers and begins drawing on the card. You try peeking over Jamie's shoulder at the doodle, but they sheepishly block your view. Can I see it? Not yet. Perfect. We should be good to go. Do you know where August lives? Mm-hmm. We can walk there together. He lives just up the road. Sure. We can talk car damages on the way. 
The muffins weren't enough? <laughs> I thought you said it was just up the road, not a hike. Would you prefer we drive? Is that a death? Is that in that death machine? I wouldn't trust driving across the street. It's not that broken. August's cabin is exactly how you'd expect. In the middle of the woods, rustic, overgrown, but sturdy. The furniture on the porch looks hand-carved, potted ferns resting on each step leading to the front door. The only thing out of place is August, shovel in hand, digging a big hole. As the two of you approach, August hops up and calls out to a kid kicking wood chips into the nearby flower bed. Junebug, you're gonna get splinters! Why don't you come over and say hi? I'm... I'm busy! Morning! Look who's back to normal. How are you feeling? Uh, just peachy. If you're looking for Atlas, he's asleep in the attic. Atlas lives in your attic? Well, attic might be the wrong word. It's more aloft. We got fairy lights and everything. Oh, that sounds lovely. Atlas is a serial cat surfer. He'll crash wherever he can fit his feelers into. Ha ha ha! The lad's down on his luck, that's all. You called him a pest. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. How'd you get stuck with Atlas anyway? He's an old family friend. We're happy to have him. We brought you a card and pumpkin bread. Oh, wow. It smells great. And a card, too? Yes, please open it. That's awfully kind of you. Tearing open the envelope, August pulls out the Get Well card and opens it. August's eyebrows furrow as he stands there, staring down at the little card, a concerned look on his face. Ah! Are you bleeding out of your eyes? If that's how you interpret it. Who's the little blue guy on your head? That's my soul! Damn. I didn't know you were a bar we were a baker and an artist. That's so cool. Jamie grins. August chuckles, tucking the card into his back pocket. Thanks, you two. August throws an arm around you and Jamie, giving you both a friendly side hug. What the f I saw that. Hope you get better soon. You give Jamie a gentle nudge. Yeah! Jamie jumps and angrily looks around, only to realize it's a puny red-haired girl yanking on their tail. She looks up at Jamie and asks, Is that a mask? No, it's my skull. Is your brain in there? It should be. Can I see? I would die. Hey! Hey, you rascal, this is my daughter, June. Did you know octopuses have nine brains? In their arms! June kicks the devil's shit. Tag, you're it! She runs off, yelling and flailing her arms around. What? I'm sorry for scaring you. Have you ever played tag? You're supposed to chase her around. Yeah, it's all, it's all in good fun. Uh, okay, sure, that sounds easy enough. Yes, let the devil chase the tiny little child. I can have fun. No, no, Jamie, no, God. I have bad feelings about this. Eh, he'll be fine. Glancing at the large shovel August is leaning against, you raise an eyebrow. There's no shrubs or saplings around needing to be planted. What's with the hole? There you know, water time. Hey y'all, and we are back. All right, I'm doing some yard work. Uh huh. I find it relaxing. This feels like a werewolf thing. I'm certain it's a normal human thing. Maybe if you're a grave digger. Grave digger. August. August tumbles into the hole. Get a load of this beefy boy digging around in the dirt. It's great to meet you, bud. You're haunted? Uh, double haunted, actually. And you're okay with this? Uh, for now, at least. I can't believe a werewolf's fallen for me. Did I come on too strong? August hoists himself up out of the pit, rubbing, rubbing his back while he winces. Oh no, I got the message. August, meet Madhouse Mike. He's alive. Like the radio guy? I'm a ghost in need of a man with a shovel. Wait, you remember me? Vaguely, but that paranormal stuff makes me queasy, so I try to avoid it. That, that's okay. It's not for everyone. One sec. Junebug, time to get ready for school. June, no biting. Help me! Uh, what is your plan exactly? You're gonna find my body and my hat too. That bastard's gotta have it. Mike, that feels wrong. Is this really how you'll find closure? Sure, if closure involves shovels and felonies. We're not doing that. Fine. I'll do it myself. Give me your phone. I'm not giving you my phone. Grrr. Okay. Look, Mike, I know you're desperate, but you can't force people to do what you want. 
like drinking poison. You got a lot of nerve, Meatball. Seriously though, is Atlas okay? He's alright, but why don't you ask him? Just shove me in a meat grinder. Don't be so dramatic, dude. If you apologize, I'm sure you'd clear the air. Meat grinder! Ah! Well, thanks for stopping by, you three. Not a problem. Yeah! It's always nice getting to know your neighbors. Could you give us a tour of the graveyard, neighbor? Since we're new in town. Why there in particular? As for my spiritual well-being, it is a rather important journey. I admire a ghost taking charge of his afterlife. Yuck. You see, all I had to do was ask. Hmm. I'd be happy to help. You not creeped out? Nah, here it's a great spot for mushroom picking. Not alone, of course, but that's just common sense. So it's settled. How about I swing by and pick you up after work, since it's a bit of a drive? Sounds like a plan. What about you, Jam Slam? You feeling adventurous? As thrilling as creeping around a cemetery sounds, I'll have to pass. I'd feel bad leaving Atlas out. You decide to take the long way home. When you're walking home, you spot two figures, recognizing one as Goatman, who's pacing around. I wake up to find half my zucchini patch has been chewed to bits! Some hooligan's been ransacking my garden! Huh? Sounds like a giant woodchuck. The second figure is a tall woman dressed in a nautical blouse. A woodchuck? Uh, we wearing a hat and tra wearing a coat and trousers? Says the talking goat. Unrelated! You stroll into view, catching the goat ma'am's eye. She greets you happily while the woman looks on. Good morning, dear! Have you seen a fellow with the most dreadful posture wandering the street? Uh, someone's been stealing rocks and plucking flowers from Parsnip's garden. Goat ma'am! I'm not calling you by your wizard title, Parsnip. That's too silly even for me. It's endearing! You don't see me wandering around calling myself human ma'am. That's because you're not a creative person. Uh-huh. So, have you seen him? Thank you, Man, I just love the character designs in this game. They're so colorful. Sounds familiar. I did stroll by a guy skipping rocks yesterday. Into the river? You think back to the stone Robbie gave you in frown. Still in your coat pocket. Do you steal rocks? Maybe. Yeah. Noted. The woman holds her hand out for a shake. I'm Tessie. It's nice to meet you. You reach out and the two of you shake hands. Her grip is firm but gentle. Robin. Goat ma'am. Tessie chuckles. I'd better get going. You should swing by the lake sometime and let frog legs know. Purple lupine flowers are my favorite. Heh, <laughs> Tessie smirks and gives Goatman a big pat on the back before sauntering off on her merry way. Hey, wait a second. What is it, dear? Um, uh, never mind. Now where's your ghostly companion? I do hope those pamphlets were helpful. Ah, yeah, thanks. Meanwhile... Face down in the dirt is a self-proclaimed frog prince, sprawled out like he's giving the earth a hug. A lone zucchini rests within his claw's reach. A weapon, perhaps? This is starting to feel like a crime scene. Hey, you okay? Craning his head to one side, Rob opens his glossy fish eyes and squints up at the bug staring down at him. Would he be an amphibian? He looks more like an amphibian. Maybe he's overheating. Atlas reaches over and touches Robbie's fluffy hat. The fish man doesn't budge. He plucks the head off the fish man. Robbie rips the hat out of Atlas's grasp and plops it onto his head. What are you doing? I thought you were dying. Are you all right? Oh. I tripped. See these webbed feet? They're shit. I'm like, I'm like an ugly featherless penguin. Rob straightens up before slouching back down again. Well, I hear you. All I've got are these wings and chicken legs. He eyes the Mothman and frowns. So you're a cosplayer. What? Because that's one strike in interpretation of the Mothman. Wasn't he some sensationalized hoax? But hey, whatever sells bumper stickers. You can't sling words like that around. Hoax? Yes, it's insulting. I'm standing right here. I stand up straight. So it's not a costume. Whoa. Have you been living under a rock? All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I gotta get back to work. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.